So, someone just ordered the Little Hero from the website, and though I'm thankful for every order and hope that there's more, I do want to teach everyone how to do this yourself. So over on drquads.com, you can find all the files and instructions to build these yourself. But nothing's quite like a video guide. So that's what we're going to do today. I'm going to teach you guys how to build the absolute best 2S drone to teach your kids or just to have fun indoors. This is Dr. Quads. And let's get into this. Okay, so here it is. This is actually everything you need to build your very own 2S little monster. Here we have four Brother Hobby 0804s fantastic motors. We have the carbon fiber plate that if you build it yourself, you will have to get cut, but the DFX file is there available for you on the website. The prop guards, which by the way, just a quick one, should be printed with 15% infill, three or four walls, and most importantly, use a random Z seam so that there won't be a seam that provides a stress fracture point, right? So the, the random Z seam means that it's pretty much the same strength all the way around. And that means that I dare you to break this, okay? My son has crashed his a thousand times. And by the way, this was actually a print defect, this little thing up here that I just never cared about. And uh, his still is holding strong. You can see it's uh, a little worse for the wear, but it works just fine. You're gonna print yourself a TPU battery sleeve, depending on what battery you need. Now this is designed for the Dogcom 560. Slots in just like that. It really fantastic. A little bit heavier than my original design, but it protects the battery and keeps the batteries from getting damaged. Cause these little things are great, but they are kind of expensive. Oh, and of course you will need a Dogcom 560 or any other 2S battery that you wanna use. You're gonna print yourself four little stack struts. This is kind of an ingenious solution that I introduced to all of my tiny little tiny whoops. And uh, I definitely expect people to be copying me on that one soon. You're gonna print at a TPU, this little VTX antenna holder, kind of hard to see. Let's see if we can, there is this little TPU VTX holder. You're gonna need four stack screws. Now, I'm gonna be straight with you. I don't remember, but we're gonna find out together. I believe it's 23 millimeters and then one 25 millimeter one. Though I could be wrong because I've changed the design a couple times and I kind of forget <laughs> which is which. Then you're gonna need two screws to screw in the camera here. And of course, you're gonna need the Cadex Ant Nano. Other cameras will work, but I find this one to be the lightest, best solution. It's a decent camera. Nothing to write home about, but it's nice. Then you're gonna need a stack. Now this particular drone is designed with these AIO five and ones in mind. That means that they have ESC, they have their flight controller, they have ELRS on board right there. They also have a VTX output right there. So these are pretty fantastic. Uh, I'm not a big fan of Happy Model, but it seems to be the best one currently uh, waiting for HackRC to make their own. Now the build itself is pretty easy. First thing you're gonna do is you're gonna get your carbon fiber plate and you're gonna open up your motors. Now if you buy the Brother Hobby 0804 motors, you are gonna need to solder on your own little JST connector. And I've already done that here off camera. Now one thing to note is that unless you're gonna redesign this carbon fiber plate, you're gonna to have to get motors that have this triangular mounting pattern. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna get our carbon fiber plate and just screw the motors on. Now each of these motors comes with a little baggie take out these screws here. These are for the props. Now, if you wanna put some Loctite on them, you can. I have had these screws back out on me before, but usually before I go fly, I just give them a nice little tight. Okay, now that your motors are screwed on, you're gonna take these little plugs and push them down through the holes here. Now, the cool part is, is that you only need to solder on this battery lead here. And of course, as you can see, I'm using an XT30, so I'm not actually gonna be using this. I'm gonna have to make my own. It's really, really important for these small boards that you use fast heat on and off. And so part of that is like, just use a lot of flux. Make sure that you're not having to put the heat on for too long, which would happen if you don't have enough resin to clear up that metal and get it ready for that solder. We're gonna pre-tin our pads as well. Okay, the ground takes a little bit of time, but the voltage should go pretty quickly.
Okay, you wanna make sure that it goes all the way through. And if the ground doesn't go all the way through, you wanna make sure that that happens because otherwise you won't get a strong enough connection. Just gonna make sure that that is nice and on there, perfect. Now there actually what is one little thing extra that I put and I feel like this is just uh, the secret to the sauce is I always put a 16 volt 470 UF capacitor just to help out with the filtering. That might be overkill, but I can tell you this right now, my son has crashed his drone so many times now and it's just the board's never fried, it's never burned an ESC, never burned a motor. So I kind of just feel like this capacitor is doing quite a lot to make sure that those internals, these very fragile internals are remaining nice and healthy. You can leave these wires long until you're done. Okay, so put this down in there and now you wanna actually take these little stack screw holders and stick them on just like that. What these little struts do is they provide a strong connection with the stack screws without compressing the gummies too much. So that like the PLA is taking on some of that compression force, but it's still providing the rigidity you want so that your board isn't uh, taking a lot of the, the damage from crashes and vibrations and whatnot. Also, if you compress the gummies too much, it'll actually lessen their ability to dampen vibrations. Okay, so the longer stack screw actually has to be in the back, and it is, good job, I actually kinda got lucky there. Now, what you wanna do is turn it over and just plug in all your motors. I would recommend wrapping up these motor wires if you're really wanting to be careful with not getting snagged on anything. However, it's, it's not mandatory. You should be fine without it. I'm gonna do it because this is a drone for a customer and I wanna make sure that he's got a really nice experience. Now what comes with the Happy Model is actually this little plug here that goes down in the camera section, but this is not good for the Caddx Ant Nano because the Ant Nano has a JST plug on it. So you're gonna have to bridge these two cables together, which is pretty annoying. What I'll do is, is I'll cut off a little bit of these so it's not too long. Then I'll cut off a good chunk of these. That seems to be about right right there. Get yourself an X-Acto knife and just kinda press down a little bit on either side and then hold it firmly and just right there all the tips of that come off now it's very important you pre-tin these wires because if you don't do this part here it's not going to make a solid connection make sure you put your heat shrink on first Okay, pull up your heat shrink. And you can also twist this wire too, just to kind of keep it from flopping all over the place. All right, we're almost done. I mean, believe it or not, that's how easy the little hero is to build. This is a fantastic starter drone for anybody. It's not gonna be as good as DJI. I'll just be honest with you on that one. If you're okay with analog, it's just my absolute favorite go-to. Go ahead and install the VTX antenna. Okay, there we go, it snaps right in. Okay, now reline up these struts. They might kind of be flopping all over the place until you finalize it. You're gonna put the VTX cable up through here, put your camera up through here, and this is kind of tricky to show you, but you just gotta screw this in. You don't have to screw them in all the way, just a little bit. This is not super necessary, this order, but I find it to be the easiest. And the main problem is, is that 
These stack screws, as you can see, take forever to screw in. So what I do is I, I screw this here. I gotta make sure this is lined up just right. Yeah, because this is the USB port right here, and you wanna line that up with the holes. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna check that. Okay, so that goes like this. So I'm gonna take this and line it up, and I'm gonna put the screw in through here, and there we go. Okay, you don't wanna go all the way through. Just once it bites into this PLA right here, you actually need to back out all three of the other ones. You put that one in first just so it holds together while you're doing the rest of the bits. One eternity later. And now you kind of see the reason why we have these struts here. And that's so that you can get a tight grip and that way the props are really rigid and yet you're not just compressing the heck out of those gummies because it's actually the PLA is kind of holding it there. Um, I found this to be the absolute best solution so it makes a really clean black box. You get really great gyro data, of course, with this little capacitor here to help things out. Now you will need to move this capacitor out of the way. That's why I leave a little bit of length. And, but also make sure this capacitor is not touching the gyro. And you're gonna wanna get four M2 hex nuts. Three goes right here. And you can melt them in. You don't have to melt them in, but melting them in makes them stay where, where you put them. You're gonna get one more there. And this one's gonna go into the VTX holder. Take this, line it up, put your camera in. Make sure the camera's the right orientation. Put it inside, and you can just use one screw right now to lock it into place. You don't need to put both in. Put your finger on it, back it out, and then push it up through. And then do it, you might need to do it once or twice to get make sure that the screw is nice and tight. Okay. That's on there, it's absolutely solid. So the VTX connector, you're gonna take this and stick it on through this VTX antenna and just kind of push it through. Okay, there you go. That should be on there nice and solid. And we are almost done. Now we just need to figure out the length we want for our battery leads. And I do recommend you use a small zip tie to zip tie these down to the frame so that you're not yanking on these leads if a crash happens and the battery ejects. So then you stick your battery in and then you wanna line this up to see kinda of how tight you want it. The flat part is your positive, the rounded part is your negative. Just remember that. Now, I almost forgot, thankfully I didn't. It's not super necessary, but I like it. It's a little quality of life, and that's to use some heat shrink on these wires here. Okay, look, I don't care how good you think you are. If you don't use a smoke stopper the first time you power on your drone, then you, you're gonna end up uh, learning the hard way. Trust me. And that's what you want to hear. Okay, the next thing to do is to set it up in Betaflight. So let's go ahead and do that now. You might need to make your own little custom USB to plug into these tiny wolves. Sometimes they can have this like plastic covering that's way too thick and it makes it really difficult to connect it in there, but you, it's not that hard. You just get some clippers and just cut away at the plastic until it snaps in perfectly. So we're gonna go to update firmware and auto detect the board, full chip erase. I'm actually gonna turn this fan on to cool down this VTX because it can get pretty hot. Just, just remember that. Okay, once that's done, go ahead and connect. We're gonna get our diff all from the file you can download on the website. And then you're gonna go over here and paste. We actually have to stop Betaflight right now because we need to flash BlueJay, so don't forget to do this. Okay, flash all ESCs. We're gonna select BlueJay. Select version, the new version, I'll try it out, uh, PWM48, and flash. 
I, I, I don't know what I'm doing. I'm sorry. And if I'm not mistaken, I should be able to input, there we go, my binding phrase. Uh, so I'm just gonna set the binding phrase that I have for my drones, which will be, all right guys, here we go. Putting the battery in right now. Slots right in there. Ho, ho, ho. Reflex on motors. Sounds so good. We're good. Just some quick advice too. After your first flight, always check motor temps to make sure that uh, you didn't get something wrong with the filters or the pit or something like that. All right. Let's see if it feels better now that I got my rates. Oh yeah. That's much better. There we go. So much more control. You guys want to know why I never break my drones? Because I'll do the walk of shame every time. I'm not going to use turtle mode. I hate that. I've seen so many people burn their motors up, burn their ESCs by using turtle mode. Not me. Ooh, let's go. It's been a while since I've flown inside like this. This little drone is so fun, guys. Super, super fun. <laughs> it's just a blast. Well guys, it's getting kind of late and I gotta go hang out with my kids. I hope this helps you and I hope this gives you the confidence to build your own little hero. Build this for your kids, or even just build this for yourself if you want to zip around the house. This thing is a load of fun, and it's an absolute tank. Make sure to leave a comment down below and let me know what you think of this, or if you built it yourself, how does it fly? How was your experience? Guys, this is Dr. Quads, and I'll catch you next time.